please, you guys, let's give a warm welcome to Marissa right now. She has an incredible testimony. Hey, now. She's been on a, quite a journey. And just her salvation testimony is good enough, but this ties into what is exactly happening in our society today, where people are saying this is good, this is what needs to be accepted, but it's because people are hurting and they want to be accepted somewhere, somehow. But Jesus Christ already has accepted them, amen? amen. And so, Marissa, can you just tell us real quickly, through a window of time before you came to Christ, what was your life like and what happened when you uh, met Jesus? Okay, so my life was, um, didn't have a direction, honestly. Um, I went from school to school, and I guess I'll just start sharing this part of my testimony. I was raised in a physically, emotionally, and verbally abusive home at the ages 8 to 12. I was molested by one of my uncles, which started the cycle of having lustful dreams of being with someone of the same sex. And that just led me down a pathway of confusion, identity issues, rejection, and depression and suicidal thoughts. Um, some time passed, and um, I ended up finding out that my dad had cancer. He had stage four cancer and four different types of cancer, and they caught it really late. They gave us, you know, just a couple months to live with him. Um, and honestly, it was, it was after all those things had, you know, were happening that um, I ended up trying to search for love in all the wrong places. Um, I, you know, because of the abuse, because all the men in my life weren't a good representation of what a guy should be protective and, you know, be that safety for you. I started looking and searching for that. I started acting on those lustful dreams that I had when I was younger. Um, and I got into my first unofficial relationship with someone of the same sex um, about two years ago. And that just led me down a whole different like road path because I started coming here and you know the Holy Spirit had filled me in but I had backslid and then I could remember the moments where I was in sin and I could remember the Holy Spirit shaking me telling me to come back and I was I was so shook because like I thought this was what like was gonna make me happy I was looking for things to fill me up but nothing can fill you up besides Jesus you know and um and especially how she mentioned, like, everything is so socially accepted now. You know, they think that, oh, because I think this way, this is who I am now, you know? And it's not that way. The, the only thing that tells us that our identity comes from the Word, from the Word of God, and He tells us who we are. Yes, amen. Amen. And you were saying, can you tell us also the moment of your deliverance, that when you started coming to Hungry Gen, can you tell us what was it like before you received your deliverance, and when you received your deliverance, what happened then? Okay, um, before I received my deliverance, um, like I mentioned earlier, I had no direction. I was so lost. I was, um, part of my testimony also was with the whole suicidal things. I was actually in a psych ward. I was hospitalized. Um, I was so close to committed suicide. Um, but something, God gave me this vision, and it was just of my brother. And me and my brother were really close, you know, at the moment. And it just gave, it gave me hope, you know, and then I started coming here. Um, Mary Lou invited me. Mary Lou attends here, and I met her through wrestling. And somehow, God always connected us, and she invited me one day. And I came from a Catholic background, so I was just like, what the heck is going on? You know, <laughs> I'm like, what is this? I was like, is this biblical? I remember I asked her, and she's like, girl, look at the screen. And there was scripture, you know, and I was like, all right, you know. And so I started coming more and more. And um, I just started receiving deliverances. I started seeing that God isn't just a God from the Bible, but God is still acting today. God is still alive today. God is still healing and delivering and saving people, you know. And um, I guess after now, like after I've been, you know, I went through prayer line a couple times. I've told her. And um, I received prayer several times. And I felt like every single time as I was going through prayer line, more and more things were coming off. I was... I was walking with all this brokenness, you know, and I was carrying it thinking that this was something I was supposed to carry. But that's what God died for us for, you know. He died for, for us to um, live in freedom. And so the more I started attending here, the more I started realizing that, you know, um, God, God, is, God is still setting people free. He's still delivering us. And now um, it's like a veil, you know. A veil was like put on my face all these years. It was it was 13 years of just dealing with bondage and dealing with brokenness. And I felt like God finally removed that. And I could finally see. I could finally breathe. I could, I could finally want to 
feel like alive and and things like things have completely changed now like now I have direction I'm about to finish my senior year in college you know I'm about <laughs> I'm about to get this degree the Lord um has been using me in ministry at my school I go to a small Christian campus in Georgia and um it's called the singers we call it the singers ministry but um the Lord has been using me there like every other weekend we go and travel to churches and we have services and we lead them in worship you know and so the Lord has been using me there to share my testimony but another thing also should I just go ahead and talk? yeah I want you to I want you to share quickly about the the marches that are taking place and the movement that is happening in the U.S. and that you're part of it so share about that okay so um this picture, actually, I just, we had a march. Um, you know, they have all these marches for, like, pro-abortion and all these other things, pride, you know, um, the LGBTQ community stuff. And so I had one of the founders. I don't know if the picture's up yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. The founder, the one with the transgender one, that he was actually the founder of this march. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So the founder was actually a transgender, you know, he was a prostitute, a drug addict. And um, as you can tell on the left, that was him in bondage and God set him free. And then God just continuously started to seek him out. He was talking about how from one day to another, he just threw all his makeup away. And God was just like, he was just asking God, how can I live for you? And God was just like, you know, don't worry about it. I'm going to be taking care of things. And so he dropped everything and God gave him this vision to, you know, have these marches where we can proclaim the truth and, and talk about how people were led out of the LGBTQ community now and are following Jesus Christ. And so now we're having these marches across like the nations and you know, across, um, across the country where we are sharing our gospel, we're sharing the gospel, we're sharing our testimonies and how God can set us free because like everybody thinks it's so normal, you know, it, it's, um, it's socially acceptable and I just, I don't know, it's amazing to see what God is doing, and it's amazing that um, he's using my testimony, something that so, like, broke me and hurt me, something that had me so confused and in shackles for so long, and now I could go out and I can minister to people, not just about leaving that community, but also leaving about everything else, and just talking about, like, the freedom that you feel, you know, and now I have, I have um, all these marches that we do with hundreds and hundreds of people from all around the world just talking about how God has set, him, has set us free, you know, and it's just, it's amazing. I, I really believe that God is doing something huge in this, in this movement, this movement of God, and there's so many ministries out there. I'll mention a few. Um, there's Uprooted Heart, Fearless Identity, and then it's called Coming Out, so it's redefining what it means to come out, and there's so many ministries helping people um, not just come out of that community, but really just finding out who they are in Jesus Christ. And it's amazing. Come on. Amen. 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 Hey, the thing what we want to draw is, is that we can look on the news on every single you know, channel, on the websites, and it can look discouraging. That you can see that the enemy is winning, saying that this is the way of life. But, but Jesus Christ is raising the generation up and he's showing that I am the way the truth and the life and the only one that has the answer come on he is raising others and using our testimonies and this is why testimonies are absolutely crucial that we use our voice to say this is the truth that Jesus Christ can only fill me amen not what society says but what Jesus Christ has to say about it amen